And there on Christmas Day, Pastor Brett sat by the fire and shared a wonderful story. Good morning, Parkridge Community Church, and Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you for joining us today online for our Christmas service. I'd like to start off the day by just reading the Christmas story account that's found in the Gospel of Luke. So Luke chapter 1, starting off in verse 26, it says, And in the sixth month of the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel said, and the angel came into her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered her and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who, has call, who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible." And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. Chapter 2 goes on to say, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone in his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accompanied or accomplished that she would de be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told unto them. 
Can you imagine that special morning? What an amazing experience that was for not just Mary, but Joseph, the shepherds, the angels coming and proclaiming that Jesus, the son of God, was actually in the form of a baby on earth. Imagine for the angels, this was all something new as well. The Bible tells us very clearly that all good and perfect gifts come from the Father above. You know, what's interesting about this is right now, perhaps, maybe your family has just finished opening gifts, or maybe you're watching this, this video and then, and then you're going to open up gifts. But it seems like this season is just so full of gifts, giving and receiving. And, you know, that's not a bad thing. I mean, we don't want to get too commercialized about Christmas, but there's some fun and there's some joy in the giving and receiving. But let's remember that God the Father is the one who gives gifts to all of us and his gifts are always good and perfect. You know, it was God who had spoken long before the time that he sent Gabriel to, to, be, uh, to visit Mary. God spoke to the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 9, and he promised, he said this in Isaiah 9, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You know, maybe today someone gave you a gift and you opened this gift and, and it was in a box different than the one that it originally came in. You ever have that experience where you open up a big, you're thinking you're getting a 65 inch TV and the next thing you know, it's a pair of socks, you know, and they think they're really funny for doing that to you or, or whatever. God not only gives good gifts, he doesn't deceive us. He doesn't trick us. But what he does do is he gives special gifts that there are gifts within those gifts. You notice when he talked about the son that was going to be coming, that the government would be on his shoulders, that he would be called Wonderful Counselor, the Prince of Peace. He was a gift, but within him were more gifts. And you know, many of you maybe received a gift this year that had a gift within it. In fact, it kind of reminds me of my childhood, if I think way back to Well, Merry Christmas, Brett! Oh, you're going to be excited. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Put it there. It's another one. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, it's another one. I, oh, it's oh. another gift. It's, it's Swedish Fish, my favorite. Yes. Well, Merry Christmas, Thank sweetheart. Thank you, Grandma. You're welcome. You know, as time went on and I grew up and I got older and, and maybe the types of gifts I got, they changed a little bit, but... You know, there were still those special gifts. It didn't matter. It didn't matter if I was 12 or if I was 20. It seemed like someone always liked to put a gift within a gift. And well, it reminded me of this time when I was a little older. I... Merry Christmas, Brett! Hey, Grandpa. Oh, you've grown so much. You're a grown man now, it seems like. Thank you, I Grandpa. I got you a Christmas gift. I want you to open now. Open it up. Dude, you didn't have It's not Duraflame Long! Oh my goodness! It's exactly what I wanted! But there's Dude. more! There's more! Oh my goodness! This is good for camping! Uh-huh! Uh-huh! <laughs> there's still more! <laughs> oh my goodness, dude! There is... Soft! Uh-huh! Well, happy So days. many gifts! So many gifts! It's a gift! It's a so surprising! Gift. Merry Christmas! Thank you! <laughs> so as you can tell, I've changed over time. My looks have changed over time and some of the gifts have changed over time. God does not change over time. He's not like shifting shadows, but he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He gives us gifts, but the greatest gift he ever gave was Jesus Christ. Let me give you one more example of this. So here he gives us the gift of Jesus. Within this gift, however, there are more and more gifts. So 
within Jesus, we find peace. Within Jesus, we find hope. Within Jesus, we find the greatest treasure ever, and that is Christ in us. So today, as you are sitting around with family and you are opening gifts or going through the gifts that you've already opened, I want to encourage you to keep this message in mind, that the greatest gift you'll ever receive is Jesus Christ, because within Jesus, there are more gifts. How do you receive this gift, you ask? Simple, believing. The Bible says, confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you'll be saved. You'll be saved from your past. You'll be saved from your sin. You'll be saved from death. There's no better gift to receive today than Jesus Christ. So take some time today. Think about it. When all the family leaves, or even as a family together, sit down and talk about it. But really take some time to think, have you received the greatest gift ever? You know, there's the, the old movie, A Christmas Story, where the boy wanted, Ralphie wanted the BB gun, and he didn't think he got it. And then pretty soon, dad's like, oh, wait, I think there's one more gift behind the tree. It ended up being his favorite gift, the best gift of them all. And you know, you may have unwrapped everything you received from people today, but there's still the greatest gift left is the one that God gives. So I encourage you today, take a moment, think about what's been said, and believe in your heart. And this will be the greatest Christmas you've ever had. And 2023 will be the greatest year because you have a gift within a gift within a gift. And that is the Christmas message for 2022. I wanna thank you for joining us today. And before we go, we would like to sing to you a Christmas song.